सो वेलकम यू ऑल नमस्कार आज हम बात करने वाले हैं ब्रीडर फार्मिंग के बारे में आज तक आप लोगों ने पोल्ट्री फार्मिंग और लेयर फार्मिंग चिकन रेयरिंग इसके बारे में तो सुना होगा तो पोल्ट्री ब्रीडर पोल्ट्री में ब्रीडर फार्मिंग भी एक इम्पॉर्टेंट पार्ट है हम उसके बारे में जानकारी लेंगे उसमें कैसे चैलेंजेस आते हैं क्या कॉस्टिंग आती है उसका केयर कैसे करना है इन सब के बारे में इन डिटेल हम जानकारी लेंगे अगर आपको वीडियो अच्छा लगे तो प्लीज़ शेयर एंड लाइक कर दो कमेंट बॉक्स में मुझे बता सकते हो आपको वीडियो कैसे लगा एंड प्लीज़ सब्सक्राइब करना मत भूलना तो चलो आज के वीडियो को स्टार्ट करते हैं आज के हमारे जो गेस्ट है ही इज़ अ वेल नोन पर्सन इन द पोल्ट्री इंडस्ट्री एंड ही इज़ अ पोल्ट्री ऑन्टरप्रीनियर एंड द वेटनरी ग्रेजुएट उन्होंने 1996 में अपना ब्रीडर फार्म स्टार्ट किया था ट्वेंट उनका 20 प्लस इयर्स का एक्सपीरियंस है और अभी तक उन्होंने बहुत सारे फार्मर्स को एजुकेट किया है एंड गाइडेंस किया है अपना बिजनेस स्टार्ट करने के लिए सो ही इज़ द प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ कर्नाटका पोल्ट्री फार्मर्स एंड ब्रीडर्स एसोसिएशन एंड वो वाइस प्रेसिडेंट एंड चेयरमैन भी रहे हैं सेम एसोसिएशन के एंड ही इज़ अ लाइफ मेम्बर ऑफ इंडियन इंडियन वेटनरी काउंसिल कर्नाटका वेटनरी काउंसिल वर्ल्ड पोल्ट्री साइंस इंडियन ब्रांच इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ वेटनरीज ऑफ पोल्ट्री इंडस्ट्री एंड वर्ल्ड वेटनरी पोल्ट्री साइंस एसोसिएशन इंडिया सो आई ऑनर टू वेलकम डॉक्टर सुशांत राय एम डी ऑफ राइज एंड न्यूट्रिशन सो वेलकम यू सर एंड वी आर ईगरली वेटिंग टू नो योर जर्नी ऑफ राइज एंड न्यूट्रिशन एंड हाउ यू स्टार्ट प्लीज टेल एस अबाउट इट Rise in nutrition was started uh, after my graduation uh, in the year uh, 92. I was uh, working with uh, Raleigh's Agrochemical Research Station as a research assistant. After that, uh, then I moved on to poultry and one uh, breeding farm in Mangalore, Sosa Hatchery. I was working as a technical manager. From there, I gained some experience. Okay. Once I gained some experience, then I moved on to start my own uh, rice. And we initially started as rice and nutrition. Then we renamed it as Rice and uh, sorry, I'm sorry, it was Rice and Breeders, okay. and I renamed it as Rice and Nutrition. Okay. This we started in the year of 1996. Okay. Yeah. So uh, please tell to our audience what exactly is a breeding farm is. Yeah, breeding farm is you know that is a, actually a, a process of producing day old chicks from the hatchery. You now we have a parent stock. We buy the parent parent stock from the parent company. That is, we buy it from industrial hatcheries. They are a parent company, and we uh, we buy the old chicks, and the process is then we have uh, brooding in four weeks. After that, we have growing from four to five to six, uh, five to uh, five to sixteen weeks. We have growing, and after that sixteen weeks, we have the uh, it, it is shifted to the laying chicks. Okay. Yeah. So from there, uh, yeah. from there, uh, after the uh, birds they take about twenty three weeks of each, they start laying. So those eggs are not. Uh, Fit for uh, producing day old chicks, but after 24, 25 weeks, we set the eggs in the hatchery. So that process will go on till up to 68 weeks. Okay. So, uh, sir, if we are talking about the precautions we have to take, because most of the breeding farms, uh, we see that the city is very far away. So, do we have to take some precautions for that, or what? Like, what, if yes, then what care we should be taking? And usually, breeding farms should be located ideally away from the city. We always try to keep away from the city, you know, why? because you know, there shouldn't be any people moving moving around the farms and houses, you know, about uh, one kilometer away from the farm. It should be isolated. That is for the parent breeding farm. Okay. So these are the ideally located uh, locations for parent breeding farm. Now what happens if there is a lot of movement, the villages close by, and all there will be a lot of disturbance. Like the farmers, there are local people, they will be growing uh, local chickens and all. And they will they disturb mm-hmm. the animals, uh, the wild birds coming there. All this will be disturbing the parent breeding farm. So then it will be the chances of the disease, disease outbreak. Okay. Yeah. So for that we have to take precautions. Precautions. Uh, we should isolate. Always the breeding farm should be isolated. And then while entering into the farm, is there any uh, criteria we should take care of? Yeah, once uh, usually for the breeding farm, we don't allow much people to enter. But we certain people have to come, like the bank people, electricity, mm-hmm. and consultants. Now consultants, we have to avoid uh, as many people. Sales, we don't allow anyone to come. And there are some raw materials which are coming. These all these people, we will have to allow them into the farm. So when they are coming at the gate, we will have to first ask them to uh, alight from the vehicle. Give them a separate footwear, spray the vehicle, 
then give them a separate uniform. Suppose they are getting into the farm, or there are technical people, the doctors, veterinarians coming, they will get into the farm. Mm -hmm. So once if they are getting into the farm, we will have to ask them to change their dress. We will have to give another dress which is kept in the farm, the footwear which is kept in the farm, all this is for the biosecurity. Okay. The more biosecurity we take care, it is better for us. Okay, that's great. Yeah. Sir, can you please tell us about the landscape or housing system? What should be it is to uh, rear the breeding farm or start the breeding farm? Yeah, ideally the landscape is nothing like there's no garden at all to be done in the farm. No fruit trees, nothing. It should be kept open. Mm -hmm. There's uh, okay. uh, no fruit trees mm -hmm. because all these wild boys are the farm. And another thing is uh, the east-west uh, lens should be longer. Okay. Any farm, if you're taking a broiler farm or a breeder farm, you should keep the east and west the length along there. Mm -hmm. Because east, any shed that will be facing east and west, mm -hmm. the orientation will be east and west. So always the length will be east and west will be longer. And north and south will be, uh, the width will be a little smaller. Okay. okay. And uh, another thing is uh, the housing, you're asking about the housing. Yeah. Uh, the uh, dimensions? Uh, or dimension depends on the number of birds. Yeah, suppose uh, I come for the uh, parent birds, uh, that is a set of now since we are going for cages, you know, like, you know, uh, there are 18 inch of cages, uh, earlier it was 16, now it has become 18, now again also it's gone to 19 to 21. Okay. So according to that, it and the number of birds house, uh, the size of the shape. Uh, okay. It varies also. Okay. And what should be the ideal ratio of female and male birds yeah, in a that cage? Is, uh, in a cage, it is 11% uh, uh, male and female ratio is about uh, half of the uh, You know, like for the female, uh, for every 10 females, we have to keep one female. One, uh, one male. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. For 10 females, yeah, one, yeah, one male is uh, sufficient. And what is the standard feed requirement on yes, the Yeah, yeah. Now, what is that? Uh, now, uh, in the parent uh, breeding farm, what happens is there is a set of uh, feed standards. Mm -hmm. Now, initially for two weeks, we give uh, unlimited feed mm -hmm. for the male and female. Mm -hmm. After that, the female we control it. So, that will be about 38 to 40 grams from second week onwards. But the male will continue. Male will continue. After four weeks, we go on giving unlimited feed. But still, we have to keep a watch on the body weight. If the body weight is increasing, then we'll have to control it, but we keep the animal to this one feed. So after four weeks, both the this one is controlled. Male is controlled, female is controlled. Then it comes to uh, 38 grams for one week. After that, we have to free after four weeks, we have to take hundred percent body weight. Okay. Then we see, then we have to grade the birds okay. to different grades. Okay. According to the grade, you know, there'll be A grade. The grade will be A plus will be. A plus will be above uh, body weight. Okay. The more body weight will be uh, this one here plus A, okay, uh, normal. The standard is the standard, and there will be a B one. So the B will be the lesser body weight, standard will be a standard body weight as per the month. Mm -hmm. So from fifth week till about 14th week, we will have to maintain. Okay. The growing stage is very, very important in the parent breeding farm. If the birds put on, going on, put on weight, weight then after that, once it is shifted to the laying shed, you won't get a good production. Okay. So this is a phase we will be. Control the body weight and see that the birds are not in excess after 22 23 weeks. Mm -hmm. So, once if the birds are understand, uh, it's on the standard field, then they are fine. Uh, you will get a very good percentage of production. Okay. And what is the standard weight of uh, when we are talking about the standard weight? If bird is more weight, we have to, it will be in plus A grade. So, what is the standard so weight? Every, every, uh, this one, we have a standard for every week. Okay. It is mentioned in the breeder's manual. Okay. Every parent company will give you a breeder manual. Okay. We are the cop, we are the cop, they give you the breeder manual. Mm -hmm. So, according to that, if, if 2300 is for one, uh, about 22 weeks, okay. so that will be the standard. Okay. So, you take above that and below that. Okay. Yeah, anything so below that will be the lesser body weight. Anything above that will be the uh, upper limit. Okay. okay, so it goes like that. So, if they will give in breeder manual? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That is all uh, synchronized. Okay. And uh, if we are talking about the lifespan of that one laying bird, uh, who is giving hatching eggs, mm -hmm. so what will be the lifespan of that bird? And as you said, if they will start in 23 weeks. 23, 24 weeks. weeks and up to which week it will uh, Yeah. See, actually, from 23 they will start. But I know selection of hatching will start after 28. 
Okay. Okay. So because we have to get a 60 grit, we'll take 55 grams above is suitable for hatching because we are expecting a chick of the 8 grams. Mm -hmm. So anything above 55 grams should be good enough for hatching okay. or to get a chick of the 8 grams. Okay. Because anything below 38 grams, the chick will not give you a good performance, it won't put on a good body weight. Mm -hmm. So anything above 38 is good. Right. So 28 weeks you get that uh, egg uh, weight. 50 grams above 60 grams. So that will continue after about 65. Mm -hmm. after, you know, it will go on laying up to 80 weeks or so. Mm -hmm. So anything after 65 weeks, the hatchability will be reduced. Okay. And the chick quality will also deteriorate. Mm -hmm. So what when the egg size will uh, it be more, bigger in size. So the chick also will be bigger in size. Initially, when the farmer buys, he'll be happy. Okay. He'll say that oh, the chicks are very big. Okay. But the growth you know, is not as good as uh, 60 grams or 65 grams uh, eggs. Okay. Yeah. So, and if, uh, like, uh, if we are talking about the productivity rate or hatchability rate, what should be the ideal uh, rate? Is yeah, now productivity cob gives you a very good production. Mm -hmm. they, uh, no, what we call is a peak production. Okay. And we see for how many weeks the peak production lasts. Mm -hmm. uh, if it lasts for about four weeks, it is fantastic. Mm -hmm. That is about 85 and all, that is uh, fantastic. But you know, this management is very important. To get a very good peak production, we have to have a very good growing management. Okay. If you have a very good growing management, control mm -hmm. of body weight, all this, uh, you know, taking the standards, all this is in a growing period. So management, growing management is good, then you get a very good peak production. So if you get a very good peak production, then it is your profitability. Mm -hmm. So those eggs, like you now uh, selection of eggs, uh, hatching uh, this one, production you may get about uh, uh, 90% or uh, suppose you get 10 eggs per bird. Mm -hmm. Out of that, all the 10 eggs won't hatch. So eight eggs will hatch. So that hen production will be ten eggs. So out of that, about eight, eight will be the your hatchability, hatch. yeah, the hatchable egg selection. Okay. Out of that, again, no, no seven may hatch. Okay. This level, yeah. Okay, okay. And uh, sir, if we, uh, like now everyone is selling after COVID, the market is changing a lot. Yeah. So we are talking about pre-COVID situation and uh, pro post-COVID situation. You can. Can you give us the comparison of that? How was the market before? Yeah, uh, the market was normal, but uh, what happened the COVID time? Uh, there was a rumors. The WhatsApp there was some rumors saying that COVID is from uh, poultry, mm -hmm. so which is not actually it's uh, false uh, propaganda which has come in the uh, mm -hmm. WhatsApp, and that uh, created a panic in the industry, and people stopped using, and there were no buyers. People started throwing panic uh, selling. Yeah. People started throwing dumping. All this has happened. Mm -hmm. So we lost uh, heavily in that period. Mm -hmm. So after all that and then through the association, Karnataka Poultry Farmers and Breeders Association, we went on giving uh, radio announcements, jingles and paper announcements, all the same thing. And slowly the people and we gave the importance of uh, protein, protein for fighting cold. Okay. So actually cold rate protein is very, it's a cheaper one and it's very important. So we went on giving uh, messages through all this media, mm -hmm. through media. And people started realizing, okay, slowly they started realizing COVID is not from poultry. Then suddenly the market improved. Yeah, so we didn't have enough uh, stocks to give. So uh, in between the prices were huge. Then again, people started placing uh, birds. So once again, the market was normalized. So market went up and down after COVID, post COVID at all. The market was going ups and downs a lot, plenty of times. And uh, raw material, in between the raw material prices, at present the raw material prices are, you know, it's very high and the output cost was less. Yeah. yeah. This is for a farmer, not for a consumer. And that is the challenge. Yeah, the challenge for the industry. Yeah. I can understand. Yeah. And uh, like, what will be the, like if some, there are a lot of young entrepreneurs who want to start or do something on their own. So, uh, if they want to invest or go with the breeder farm, so what suggestion uh, you can give or uh, what will be the initial investment and then you can tell what suggestions you want to give. To yeah, no, it's a good idea of getting into poultry breeding. So because per capita in, uh, consumption in our country is just 5 kgs per uh, this one, per person. So in the West it is about 45 kgs. Still we have a lot of space to grow here. So we are a huge, uh, you know, populated uh, country. But here the population, here the problem is uh, we are about 26 weeks, we are uh, non-vegetarian. After that, the 
26 weeks of uh, vegetarian. Yeah. After October, June, it is all vegetarian. Festivals. Festival yeah. till uh, December. Yeah. yeah. Now, you know, you have seen all this yeah. Nasara or uh, till Deepavali. After Deepavali or something, slowly it will start. Okay. Then again, the Shabari Mala season will come. And Kotra in uh, Tamil Nadu. So, all this will hamper the thing. Only after December, it will start, uh, you know, the market will start. Again. So, invest, uh, getting into the industry is uh, fine. You know, uh, we have enough uh, space to grow. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, I like uh, what uh, the uh, youngsters let them invest on the industry. And the government has come out with uh, animal husbandry, you know, uh, infrastructure uh, funds. Okay. There's a lot of support for the you know, anyone who's coming out with the mm-hmm. poultry, dairy, or anything, feed mills, hatchery, you know. Mm-hmm. They give an inter- interest subvention of uh, 3%. So all this is, you know, two years uh, loan repayment committee and a lot of support for the animal husbandry. So in that poultry also is one part of it. Okay. So they can get into it. So they have to, you know, instead of depending on this trader, mm-hmm. they only have to get into marketing. Right. But there are a lot of people now, they get into marketing. Mm-hmm. They have their uh, cabin stock, they have their treatments and they have their own outlets. They have their broiler integrated farms and they have their own outlets. Yeah. So that is, you know, more profitable. Yeah. So a lot of people, you know, should get into own marketing. Once yeah. they are own marketing, then uh, it is better and for them. there is a huge demand. As demand, well. yeah. People yeah. are like a lot of becoming lazy uh, and they want this at oh, doorstep. Yeah, doorstep. doorstep. Yeah, yeah. So, um, even we can nowadays we can see there is a lot of people who are starting their new brands and yeah, yeah, with yeah, the yeah, yeah, new yeah, 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 new brands are coming in. So, you know, youngsters can get into it because youngsters, they have a lot of ideas. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it is one good opportunity, yeah, opportunity for, them for them to start. To start. Yeah. yeah. So and uh, so as a president, you are uh, there in KPFA. So what uh, you can like, what the steps you are taking to help the farmers, like breeder farmers, or what the steps KPFA is taking? To yeah. Now KPFA, uh, KPFA, Karnataka Poultry Farmers and Breeders Association, with association with the Karnataka Veterinary University, now they have given us a space in Nepal in the university campus. Uh, now here we have established a training center. This training center is like an incubation center. We want to train more people into the industry. Mm-hmm. We want the veterinarians to come here. We want the youngsters to come here. We want to start a uh, breeding farm, commercials. We want to train them. And we want uh, you know managers uh, to be trained for the farm. We have shortfall of uh, managers in the farm. So we want to train them. Anyone who wants training, we are going to conduct their training. And gradually, uh, training sessions also will be going on uh, upgradation of uh, technical aspects. Mm-hmm. And then we have a laboratory here, and we have a scientist uh, appointed for that. And laboratories, you know, any farmer having a problem, he can get his birds here. He get his uh, feed sample here, can get his bird uh, examined, feed sample analyzed. Mm-hmm. On all these facilities, can be taken. Okay. Yeah. So if somebody wants to train themselves on particular aspects yeah. in the pre- uh, for the poultry. Yeah. So uh, are you providing any that kind of training? Yeah, definitely. We, we give them a periodical part here for a week's time. After that, we put them into a breeding farm or commercial farm and we give them a hands-on training. Okay. So that will help them a lot. You know, instead of simply coming here and the periodical doesn't help. Mm-hmm. So we tell them the basics of what is what. Mm-hmm. Poultry is, this is all poultry. Then we take them to the farm. Then right from brooding, we'll start them giving them training. So for two, three months, they'll pick up what's happening in the commercial farm and the breeder farm. Okay. Yeah. So nowadays, uh, obviously, the practical training was important. Yeah, right? yeah. So we, everybody talk about the book uh, oh, yeah. and the theoretical part. But uh, the practically, jitna hum zada jaan sakte, that is more important. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I think, uh, thank you for all this information, yeah. sir, yeah. because it will be really helpful for those who want to start their own yeah. uh, business. And uh, I uh, thank you so much for thank giving you. your time. I know that your schedule was very tight, but then you gave me a little time. So thank you thank so you. much. I hope आपको वीडियो अच्छा लगा होगा अगर आपको ब्रीडर प्रोडक्शन में इंटरेस्ट है तो आप मुझे कमेंट बॉक्स में मैसेज कर सकते हो एंड अगर आपको मोर इन्फॉर्मेशन चाहिए इस वीडियो के बारे में प्लीज़ मुझे मैसेज करो एंड थैंक यू फॉर वॉचिंग द वीडियो नमस्कार